Well, not much of a title. Um, I have honorary degrees, but not uh, not a real PhD. Um, I have honorary PhD, uh, the, the Doctor of Science, but not uh, I never actually went through it. Alan Emtage is my name. Um, I am here in Barbados, which you might be able to tell from that. Um, and I um, I invented uh, Archie, which is considered the world's first search engine long, long before you kids were born uh, in 1989 uh, and um, went on to do some other stuff with uh, standards, setting standards for the uh, internet uh, uh, URLs. I'm the one responsible for standardizing. Well, I, my, the committee that I that I chaired was responsible for standardizing URLs. Um, I worked with a lot of people from the uh, original sort of internet pioneer, <clears throat> pioneer days, uh, people like Tim Berners-Lee, who invented the web, and um, Vint Cerf, who invented the internet itself. Uh, and uh, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm an old timer on this stuff. Well, uh, everything, a lot of the stuff that we do with, uh, he was talking about Dr. Timothy Berners-Lee, the father of the internet and you know we all use google search and we we all use search engines pretty much i don't know about you guys but me multiple times on a daily uh, uh, on a uh, daily uh, number so uh alan can you kind of take us back to what was that kind of aha moment in in your process of innovation well the aha moment didn't actually happen at the creation of the search engine the aha moment was the realization that other people uh would find what i had built useful um and so when i first created uh created it i wasn't creating the search engine i was creating a little set of programs that would help me do the kind of work that i was uh, was tasked to doing, which was finding stuff on the internet for the students and the staff at the university that I worked at, which was uh, McGill University in Montreal. And, um, and as a result, uh, I had uh, a set of repositories, which are known as uh, anonymous FTP archives that contained data and programs and, uh, and all kinds of stuff, you know, music and, uh, well, not much video back then because the internet wasn't really very fast. But um, so I was responsible for uh, finding that for the staff and the students at, uh, at, at the department that I worked for. And I created a bunch of scripts that would go out and collect the information I needed so that I could search that, I could search the, 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 the data that, that had brought the, those scripts had brought in. And, um, and uh, at one point, my boss, who was also a student uh, in, the, in the system administration uh, the staff, the sysadmin staff, uh, knew that I had this information because he'd used it. He'd asked me for stuff before, and he was responding to a request that he had received on uh, on the internet. And I gave him the answer, and he posted it. And then other people started saying, "Well, if you have this, you know, information, do this search for me, and do this search for me." And uh, and we realized that it was silly for us to do this this stuff manually that, you know, the, the same computers that we were using could allow those people to make the searches themselves. And so we put a little interface onto the data and that was the, that the aha moment came at the, at that point where we thought, oh, you know what, the, the stuff that I'm doing, other people have need for this as well. And, uh, and allowing them access to it uh, was, was uh, uh, the, the next step and uh, and we did that and it immediately became one of the hottest things on the internet now remember this is 1990 so um the internet was much smaller and much slower back then but uh it at one point the um all half of the traffic to all of eastern canada was coming to that one machine because it was really the only search engine on the entire internet do you mind if the kids ask you some questions? Um, no, not at all. Okay, so we have Alice. Uh, Alice, I believe, is in Italy. Alice, go ahead. Uh, you should be able to unmute to ask your question. You had a good question. Um, hello, first of all. And if you had to give any teenager today any piece of advice to create something as daily yet essential as a search engine, what would it be? Oh, I think one of the things that... Um, 
that we've learned over and over again in the internet is don't take the way that we currently do things for granted as the only way of doing things, right? So we we're, we see over and over again how people have taken um, uh, processes and devices that we thought, you know, what are you going to be? What can you do with it? You know, wh why would you change this? So what my example is the thermostat, right? So we've had thermostats for a hundred years, right? Um, to control heat in our homes, and uh, and at one point, the, 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 a group of people decided, you know what, the thermostat, we, we just assume that the thermostat is just there, you set the temperature and, it's, and, that, and, and, that, and that's it. And being able to go back and look at it and say, well, what, the, what is the actual, what's the purpose of the thermostat? Don't, don't look at it as a, as, a, as a product in itself. What is it doing, right? What is the purpose of the, pro, the, the, the thermostat? Well, it's to maintain uh, both to maintain a, a comfortable environment, but also it's something that we might use to save energy. I and mean, it might be something that may, we may use to be able to, um, uh, wouldn't it be useful to be able to turn it on and off remotely? Uh, wouldn't it be useful if it were able to learn how we behaved in our house rather than us having to teach it, you know, set temperatures manually and that kind of stuff. And so uh, there's an old, um, there's an old and very classic paper from the Harvard Business School, which said that the railroads failed in America because they thought they were in the railroad business and not in the transportation business, right? So that is, it's, you know, pull yourself away from, uh, from how things are currently done and try and see things in a new light. And that may give you insight into what the next, you know, what the next big thing can be because you're just seeing it from a different angle. You just don't accept it for what it is. That's, that's some pretty sound advice. Um, Matt, I'm gonna go ahead and unmute you. I was actually wondering the same question myself. Um, Matt, I believe is in Italy. Go ahead, Matt. Hi, uh, nice to meet you. So my question is, what uh, pushed you to do this job uh, and uh, what did you feel when your dream started to, you know, happen? Well, the thing is, don't ass the, the assumption there is that I knew what I was creating and had set out to do it, and I didn't really. It was, it was solving a problem that I had at the time and, and then realizing that it had other uh, ap you know, applications uh, and that it was, a, it was something that other people would find useful. So it really wasn't... Um, a situation in which I had a goal that I was working towards and, and those, those goals came true. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't quite work that way. It doesn't quite uh, work in the way necessarily that you think it might work. And, uh, and so, you know, I, I can see what happened when I look back in retrospect, I can see what, um, what happened, but I didn't plan for it to happen the way that it happened. Well, we, we thank you for pursuing it, nonetheless, all of us here. Um, Michelle has a really cool question. Michelle, you should be able to unmute. Hi, uh, I'm Michele. I'm oh, from Italy. sorry. Uh, nice to meet you. I, I was wondering uh, um, what prog programming language do you use the, to program uh, Archie? Archie? Archie. Um, Archie was originally the first. Uh, the first incarnation of Archie was um, uh, shell scripts, uh, Unix um, uh, sh C shell scripts. Um, and then when we, uh, the second version of Archie was written using C, uh, and from then on it was written in C. That is. Uh... Pretty straight. You heard it right there from the source. <laughs> uh, Miss Hilliard's class in Nevada, here in Nevada, I'm not sure if you guys are able to unmute, uh, but I'll go ahead and ask one of their students questions. They wanted to know. Um, oh, okay. oh, there they go. go ahead, guys. Um, my question was when you first started your business with I mean, your um, invention, did you think it'll um, have the success it did when you were thinking of making the invention? 
I, sorry, I didn't get. Did, he, she she wanted to know. Do you think it was going to have the success that it ultimately did? Like, could no, you have ever imagine that in your wildest no. dreams? Well, I mean, I I couldn't have imagined what all of this became. Nobody nobody really did, right? None of us working back then, uh, you know, which is um, you know thirty years ago. Uh, nobody back then really could imagine how. Um, how total, uh, how ubiquitous the internet has become. You know, your fridge nowadays has an internet address. So uh, I think the only, of, of all of us who were working back then in, sort of in the pioneering fields um, that had some sort of vision of where this was going was Tim Berners-Lee. Uh, Tim, Tim had an idea of what he wanted to become, but even Tim, and I've talked to him about this, um, uh, you know, I had talked about him s- subsequently, uh, I don't think he 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 had no, no idea that it would be uh, quite it, nobody nobody did nobody r- realized that you know billions of people would be using it on a daily basis and it would become essential for basically our modern life. Yeah, and again, uh, I know a lot of us are studying about internet history and famous inventors. Um, Alan here, as along the lines of Tim Berners-Lee, I, I mean, we wouldn't have a lot of the stuff we deal with every single day if it wasn't for these two individuals. Um, we have Maria, she wanted to know, why did you guys call it Archie? Was there any specific reason? Archie, we had to come up with our name really quickly because this thing was getting popular and we needed to be able to refer to it by a name. And uh, the repository, the, 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 data, the sources of our data were called anonymous FTP archives. If you take the V out of archive, it becomes Archie. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. Originally, I thought it was Archie Comics, and then I Googled oh, it. Oh, I hate Archie Comics. I Ironically, I Googled it, and it said no. Ironically, I had to Google that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and we have the final question, and then we are going to go ahead and let you go. This is Mev, our uh, friend in Italy. Mev, go ahead and read the question. Nice to meet you, Helen. Hello. <laughs> Hi, I would like to know what kind of advice would you give to us uh, as we try and decide what careers to purpose? Ah, that's an old, old question and there's never a good answer to that. I I will tell you, um, here is what I would say. Uh, A lot of people say, follow your passion. I don't give that advice. I think your passion should remain your passion and not necessarily your career. Uh, your career is something that you should enjoy, um, but many people who enjoy cooking and, and become restaurateurs end up hating cooking because they spend their entire life cooking. You know, many people who enjoy taking photographs and try to become uh, professional photographers end up hating it because it becomes a job. Um, you, I, I would say find something that you're good at, something that you enjoy doing, but not necessarily something that is your uh, passion. One of the worst things that you can do is fight uh, for a job, uh, fight for a career that you don't have either the interest or the aptitude for. Uh, that will lead to um, that will lead to many tears down the line. Uh, don't don't become a lawyer unless you you're interested in becoming in uh, becoming a lawyer. Don't do it because you know you think it may be a fun it may be a a, a, a good paying job. Uh, it may be, but you also may end up miserable with it. So uh, find something you enjoy that you because you're going to be spending you know eight to ten hours a day, five days a week doing this thing. Uh, find it something that you enjoy and that you and you have an aptitude and you're good at, but don't necessarily do something that you're necessarily passionate about. 